Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience, Ed and Nathan. What's new? Uh, it's raining today on this particular podcast. Yes, it is. And it's cold, and we had had a few days of warmth, and I, I like those better. So if I where agree. you are is sunny and warm, just know we didn't record it today. We, or or you or, in your spot. Or where yeah, you, where are, you, where you, you are, are right now. That's right. Wherever you are right at this but yes, moment. Yes, it is on this day. Yes. yes. It's a little dreary. A little yeah, dreary. Looking out the windows here at Community Christian as we sit here in the lobby, making sure no one can walk through while we <laughs> record the podcast. Yes. We, we do take up a large chunk <laughs> we of decide the campus here. We yes. will stop traffic. Yes, yes. So uh, on this particular day that we are filming, it happens to be Nathan's birthday. So It is. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Nathan. Yes. So for all of you who know when that is, now you know. Now and if you, you know. don't. Then you send know him, even less. You're less. Cel- celebrate it right now, anyway. Yeah, send him a belated birthday wish. Even yeah. if you are late catching up on this, and you're at episode 59, and it's 2022, it send is him. Nathan's birthday. It, it, on back it will have been that year that, too. That's right. Yeah, they come around pretty often. There you go. So Let you me feel, know. You feel any older Woo-hoo! there, Nathan? You, I don't know. I you some know, people get depressed on their birthdays. So. Oh, I don't get depressed on my birthday. I yeah. don't know. It's nice. Good for you. It's nice to c- celebrate me. That's so, right. Yeah, <laughs> there ain't nice nothing to, better to celebrate. Nice celebrate to celebrate me. such things. I will say it's funny. Most uh, a lot of a lot of the people that um, a lot of my friends who uh, I'm I, I am I do ministry with on my teams and such tend to be a fair amount younger than me because many of them are my former students, and so to them. I, I feel old when I'm with them of because they 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 think of me as being old. So mm-hmm. all of not, I promise you, there's none of them are listening to this podcast. So they don't they don't know that. But if you're out there, you should know you make me feel old. So that but uh, that that has nothing. You to might do be with surprised. You might have number. a secret listener. Maybe a secret. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe keep it secret. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want to know. Keep it secret if that's the case. All right. But. So here we go. Today, today, uh, today, we have uh, some great. I, I specifically this first question. I, I personally really love. I just love this question. I just All want right. to say that. All right, Jason loves. Jason it. loves this question. Oh, well, Thank you, podcast Joel, listener. You should in as he reads this in post. <laughs> you should put like a, a heart, heart, heart around a it. Heart as soon as he reads it, it comes him. up. Do not, a little fuzzy face, make it a soft focus. And not that I it. don't love all the questions, but this one made me happy because I'm glad we're going to get to answer. I'm going to say he does not love all questions. Okay. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> so here we go. Um, and I love the way the person starts the question. This person says that they have just started listening to the podcast and they've actually gone back to the very beginning. Wow, good for you. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm impressed. Is that I, how y'all do it with podcasts too? You don't start with where they're at, you go back I to I unfortunately am that person. Yeah. I have to start at the All beginning. All of them? Because it depends well, on me. Well, it depends. I will listen to the current one that I got started on and then I go, oh, that was really good. Or... It was okay. Yeah. If it was really good, I'm going to the first. It depends mm. on what it is for me. Like, if it's a weekly podcast where they're going to, uh, I mean, they're and their current event kind of stuff, yeah. I'll, I, I, probably oh, won't, yeah. I probably won't go back. And if it's not that great, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to go back but and see. But if it's something like a story, sure. you kind of oh, yeah, have yeah, yeah. to. Or I sure. will say, there, there's a podcast I love. I, listen, I now have a, <laughs> it's probably my age, uh, you know how when I was growing up, there were certain days that certain shows came on, and you mm-hmm. looked forward to that. Mm-hmm. I now have days for podcasts like Me too. that. Sure, Me yeah. too. that, and uh, I have a. I listen to a podcast at night as I'm laying in bed, winding down. Mm. I have. Different- That's creepy. If you do that with our podcast, keep that secret as well. <laughs> I've had well, people tell me for years they listen to my messages as they go to sleep. <laughs> I actually, to be fair, I did have someone tell me that they were listening to us and they fell asleep and then they woke up to you singing. Oh well, and that's good. That'll wake you up. You were you were singing something. I think it was that you were making fun of Beyonce or something. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I, that doesn't sound. I love I Beyonce. Take- yeah. Well, maybe you weren't making fun of her, but you were. You were uh, repeating. Well, me trying to sing like Beyonce would be making fun well, of her. It would. Yeah, but they fell asleep to our podcast, and that woke them so up. This so person, this person, big fan of the podcast, super they, fan of the podcast, they must not be. listening while we were asleep. That was me going back. That's right. Yeah, going sorry. back from the beginning, and they've come across something. This is random yes. talk. So here is the time. Now we're going to read the question, and the heart's going to come up for Jason. Now, okay, yes. cut right here. So this question asker says. I've heard you all say a few times in the podcast, this world is a safe place for a follower of Jesus. 
this last year has not felt safe to me. Mm. Really, I haven't felt safe much in my life. Is mm. that because I'm not a follower of Jesus? How can this world be safe when so much bad is happening? Aren't there followers of Jesus who get killed? Are they safe? And then they say, sorry for rambling. I just want to understand. Mm. Sure. That's and a great question. I don't think you rambled at all. I, I, again, I love the question, and I appreciate the question. Because we do say that a lot. We've said that on this podcast. This world is a safe place for a follower of Jesus to be. You know, as you were reading that, I thought about a story out of the Scripture that, I, that to me illustrates what the person's thinking about. Mm. I do think you can be a follower of Christ and not feel safe. I do think yes. that's true. Mm-hmm. So there's an incident where uh, Jesus and the disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee, which happens several times. They're in a boat. They're crossing the Sea of Galilee. And uh, Jesus falls asleep in the bottom of the boat while they're going across. Apparently, the rest of the guys are awake. And uh, there's a huge storm come up. They are convinced they're all going to die. And Jesus sleeps right through the whole thing. He finally wakes up and he goes, why were you afraid? Mm -hmm. Well, because they were safe. He was convinced they were safe, yeah. uh, even though he was in the same boat. And they were safe the whole time they felt unafraid, and they were following Jesus while they felt afraid. Mm. It's just they were not aware of everything that Jesus would have had them be aware of, which is that the Father was with them, and they mm-hmm. had gone on this trip. The Father's kingdom, uh, he loves them, he's caring for them, and everywhere they are is a safe place to be because ultimately you're in the Father's kingdom as long as you choose to live with the Father. And I think it's real important here to clarify because that is a very broad statement that we make. But when we say safe, it doesn't necessarily mean that bad things are not going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we get this idea that, you know, what, what we're... And, and I will say a lot of Christians do believe this. I don't necessarily. That if you have enough faith and you pray the right prayers and, you, you know, you live the right kind of life, then nothing bad is going to happen to you. Only good things will flow to you. Uh, I don't think that's in line with There are no 150-year-old people that believe there that are not. who are also following Jesus. That's right. So at some point, either their faith got weak or that theology was wrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when we say the world's a safe place as a follower of Jesus, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to go your way and that you're never going to get hurt and, of course, that you're never going to die. It, I think it does point, for me, it points to the reality that life in the kingdom of God is an eternal existence. And um, that... We often think of that when we say eternal life, we often think, well, that's coming later. This life here is this little finite thing that where I've got to be afraid and I've got to hold on to this life and I've got to be worried about that at all times. But the way Jesus described life in the kingdom was no eternal life. It it starts the moment you step into the reality of the kingdom and it just keeps on going. And I, and I do believe that when Jesus said in John chapter 11 that if you live and believe in me, you will never die. Or And that mm-hmm. phrase that, uh, that I think Paul says, he, he, someone won't taste death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe that for the, for the follower of Jesus. I mm-hmm. believe that it will be such a smooth, seamless transition that we might not even notice. I mm-hmm. agree with that. And I think some evidence of some of the near-death experiences we've looked at around here a lot have told us that that's probably the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the very least, um, this the, the eternity, the eternal life that we are in now um, is not distinguished between the life that we live in on this in this existence on, on this planet. Yeah, and I think I think to the point you're making there, Jason, about eternal life. You know, Jesus says eternal life is is knowing the Father yep. and knowing Jesus Christ, whom the Father sent. Right, and you know, I think if that's if that's your definition of what life is in real life, uh, you, know, you mentioned Paul. Paul says that it's the life that is truly life. You want to take hold of the life that is truly life. It means that there's an experience of life that most of us experience that is not life. Yeah, uh, it's a it's what we think life is, and so um, most of our fears for safety or security are in that realm 
of the life that is not truly life, in, including I, even ideas. It's not to say that God doesn't care about our physical safety. I think he does. I think he's very invested because that's a part of our life. But that that is not the definition of what life is. Mm-hmm. It's not that God doesn't care about our financial security or our job health. He does. I mean, that's a part of our life. God cares about every individual piece of our life. But that that is not the life that is truly life. Uh, the life that is truly life that is safe and secure is that there is nothing that can stop you you uh, from living in relationship in every moment with God, with Jesus Christ, whom he sent. There's nothing that can, as Jesus would say, pluck you from his hand. There's no, there's no situation that it can impede you from experiencing life with God. And so even if it is, as Jesus experienced, physical torture and death, nothing can do that. I remember in fact, in a couple of weeks, I'm teaching on this idea um, that ultimately the greatest gift God gives us is this ability that whatever we set our mind upon, I get to choose what I set my mind upon, that nothing can take that, and that that's what reality in the kingdom is, is it's this invitation uh, to a life where God is with me, and um, nothing can take that from me. And so when we say it's the safest place to live, it's not about physical safety. Yeah. It's not about financial stability. It, it's not about those things. Although those are all incorporated. I don't want to separate those things from them. That's all a part of it. But the ultimate, as you said, eternal life, I'm an eternal being. Um, and that, that exists in my ability to know and relate to God. That can't ever be taken from me. And... There's joy in that. There's peace in that. There's all the fruit of the Spirit in that. And so I think to what you're saying, and that's what it means you won't ever taste death. Yeah. That you step from this life that is a shadow of the real life mm. fully into the other life where I'm just with God all the time. And yeah. I think I think that's a, 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 a beautiful statement. So I, th- I yeah. think that's one of the, you know, the person asked the question, they, you know, they weren't, quest- they're, they're wanting to understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's why discipleship in your thoughts well, you know some people say it's the only real discipleship we have yeah. i i'm often i'm often discipling i'm often disciplining my body so that mm-hmm. it won't just run on these random kind of things that my brain is out of control so that i can discipline my thoughts but my thoughts they control every thought about me everything about me and i must be filling my mind continually mm-hmm there are thoughts that come to me and I, I mean, I don't know why this has taken me so long to begin to really, even down to the little level of is that thought that I'm having right now, a thought from above or below? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it feels completely natural to me, like, Oh yeah. I, I've had many addictive problems in my life. The last one I feel like, well, probably ain't the last one, but (laughs) Last one still, you kick. <laughs> it's the current one I is still food. I really I have thoughts all the time that are not true, but they've been with me at certain times throughout the day. You're hungry. I, in fact, I'm not hungry. Mm-hmm. I know what hunger physically feels like. I seldom feel physical hunger because my brain has been telling me, don't let that happen. Go eat something. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. About any time there's food available, my brain says, you should eat that. (laughs) You want it. And I've finally come to the realization that thought is not from above. Just Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. little bit of a random thought. Mm -hmm. And, And so then the thought at a bigger level that I used to have years ago, which I used to have the thought, it's why I used things and all the kinds of things that were having me out of my control when I was 18 to 59, uh, you know, of uh, where a lot of, hey, you're afraid. You're in a dangerous situation. You've got to take control of this situation. Make sure everything's okay. I lived in a lot of fear, and so I had to begin to, I had to take control of those thoughts. Hey, I'm okay. I'm not in a dangerous situation. Yeah. So let's let, let let me turn the conversation just to just a hair, but I, I think it's important. I want to speak to the person who asked the question because they did say, "I haven't felt safe much in my life." Does that mean I don't follow Jesus? Mm. Well, what do what, what do you guys think we should say to that? I I would first say, I would ask someone outside of yourself when you look at my situation, do you think I am unsafe? 
if I can't really get a handle on it myself? Because the truth is, we don't know. It's just a question off the internet. That's right. Maybe, in fact, you are in a dangerous situation. Mm-hmm. Sure. That we don't know about. Yeah. And if it's a dangerous situation you can step out of, you should step out of it. Yes. Sure. If you can, you should. Mm-hmm. And maybe you need somebody, if, if you've always felt that way, the, the problem with always feeling that way is you don't have, you have a broken meter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If your meter is always pegged to on, mm-hmm. you, you can't really judge what's safe and what's not safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think, it, you know, and again, this is speaking in a general sense. What Ed said is absolutely true. If, if there's harm being done to you or, you know, those kinds of things, then absolutely you should step out of that. But if that's a general sense that you walk around with, maybe just a sense of anxiety or a fear of what might happen. Because I know that's, that's what a lot of people struggle with, is a fear of what might happen to me. There's so many bad things happening in this world. I see lots of things on the news. Um, what if? What if? What if? Um, I had a pivotal conversation uh, with a guy, when, and it's crazy. I still remember it. I was probably 14, 15 years old. And he was an older guy in my, in my sphere of friends and a believer. And we were just riding around one day, and, I, and we got on this topic, worrying about things, of what might happen in life. And he just made this what he probably felt was an off-the-cuff remark. He said, he said, what's the worst that people can do to you? He said, I'm serious. He said, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? And I said, well, I might die. And he said, well, that's taken care of too. Mm-hmm. And what he was doing was he was pointing me back to the reality of the kingdom. He wouldn't have said it in those terms. But the fact that even that is, even that is secure as a follower of Jesus. That's right. And so... I can live in this world with a sense of what Jesus called rest and peace Mm -hmm. and calm, knowing that whatever happens to me or whatever could happen to me, even if the worst happens to me, I am truly safe at the end of the day. That's right. And I think all of that comes back to, you know, when you say you, you you don't feel safe, does that mean I'm not following Jesus? I think... I think a lot of what Jesus is trying to do is to bring into, and we talked about this back in our series, Pieces to Peace, that what God is trying to do for me is to bring all the different pieces into my life into alignment with him and his kingdom and his will for everything. And so I have all these different pieces of me, and often we all are filtering our experience of reality through different filters. So... You talked about, you know, my mind, getting mind discipleship right. For many of us, that's our primary place of experiencing reality is in my brain. It's what I think. A lot of us, though, we're experiencing a lot of things through feelings, that I have feelings that I can't even quantify in my head. Right. I can't, I, I don't even know what I'm, fe- I'm just feeling something. That's my experience. Some of us are very bodily. And what I mean is, <laughs> what if I'm hungry or I'm tired, or I'm nervous, or I've got this, there's something off with my sleep. That determines a lot of my experience of reality. All of us have all these different mixtures in the thing. And so my mind is one level of that. My will, though, is the ultimate level that I experience anything. My will, which is my ability to determine what I am after, what I am focused on, what I am pursuing, that ultimately is the determine, determining factor, which is why Jesus says when it comes to fear and worry in the Sermon on the Mount, that if you seek first, if you set your will upon God and his kingdom, all these other things will be taken care of. He, he doesn't even mean that if you're poor, right, and for whatever reason you can't afford anything, that if you seek first God's kingdom, you're going to become rich. That isn't what he, he doesn't mean That's everything right. you've ever wanted will come into mm-hmm. alignment. It's that ultimately... The things that matter most in this life, God is working for your good in those things. If I get to a place, like you said, that I I do truly believe a person, I'm following Jesus, I allow, I, I give control of my experience of reality to him. And so what he says is true of life. Um, you know, and you mentioned things above, right? That Paul says, set your mind on things above where your true life is hidden in Christ. That that's where I am. I'm in his kingdom. Christ is ruling. He's reigning. He's controlling things. No matter what I feel in that moment, how safe I feel, no matter what my body is telling me, no matter what my mind is telling me, what I know to be true of Christ 
is is the true reality. Now, like you said, I have to bring all of those other things if I know I'm in a situation where I'm physically unsafe. I can't just go, well, I'm safe in the kingdom of God, so <laughs> I'll stand here in the middle of this twister. You know, yeah. I there, th- that I have to have <clears throat> wisdom, but all of that comes down to me saying, what is it that Christ wants for me in my life? And I'm just going to trust that. Well, Christ does want you, if you can be physically safe <laughs> and, and still follow his will, to do that. Mm. That if, if, if uh, th- But even if I'm not... I can still, I can still bring glory to Him. That's yes, right. that's right. His will can be done in my life. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Again, thanks for the question. Yeah, Appreciate great it. Question. Good question. And if we didn't do a good job, hey, go go send us another one. Yes. Or if you need us. if you need help, you I need mean, help. you can't right. get these things sorted out. We really want to try to help. And yep. If you're physically in danger and we're close by, hey, we want to help with that too. So. Absolutely. All right. Second question for today, and I think this will take us to our time. Uh, I can tell that reading the news online or watching it or listening to it is not helping me, but I feel like I need to be aware of what is happening. Is there a way I can do this and not have it derail me from following Jesus? I think a lot of people feel that these days. They feel like the news and the, the way that the news is given to us these days is not helpful in our following of Jesus. So I, I, I would say first, I, I, I don't think you're alone in right. that feeling of struggle that you have on that. Um, so say that right out front. Um, but, you know, I think we said this before we hit record. Um, you, you, There is a way to follow Jesus and not necessarily know what's going, everything that's going on in the world. Well, and until the last... Uh, maybe 10 years, I don't know, since the really dawn of news on the internet and yeah. speed of news, everyone who followed Jesus knew, followed Jesus without knowing what was going on in the world. Yes. Yeah, at every moment. They, everything mm-hmm. was delayed. I mean, when I was mm-hmm. growing up, it was delayed by hours. When my dad was growing up, it was delayed by a day or two. When the generation before that, it was often delayed by weeks. And when mm-hmm. Jesus was, you know, on the earth, sometimes it was delayed by months. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, when you think about the fact I was, that Paul wrote these letters to people answering questions that they had asked seven months ago, probably, mm-hmm. when the letter sure. gets to him, he sends an answer. They asked a question, and he finally answers them a year and a half later. Yeah. Uh, they weren't that really concerned about being current. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, about the time because we're about what a year out from when COVID really took hold. Um, right around that time in my house, um, it was just a common thing in my house for us to, or me, I usually did it was turn on the television when everybody's getting home from school and we're making dinner and we're getting ready to sit down, and it's just a background noise. It's yeah. just something to have on, you know. And I started noticing that once COVID started really becoming the thing and everybody was talking about it, that that was all we were hearing. And it was just fear and negative and what might happen. And it was the what ifs and all of that stuff. And I, and I just, I could sense it in my house, almost like a physical feeling of dread and heaviness and a burden being placed on me, my family. That was it started becoming a part of our conversation. So, in response to that, I just said, "Do I really need this on?" And so I made a conscious choice and I turned it off. And I can say it's a year later, and that's pretty much held true in my family. And it is for our good. Right now, I just I turn on some music or something if I want something in the background. I just whatever it is, I don't do that. Yeah. And I can tell you, I'm no less informed. <laughs> Yeah. Then, then, or at least I don't feel like I'm yeah. I'm behind anybody. You've heard me. I guess you both have heard me talk about this. I think this was late two thousand eight nine. I heard a guy speak. He was the president of the University of Southern California, uh, and he had a book called The Contrarian's Guide to Something. And I always think of myself as contrarian, and so I loved his book. And then I heard him speak at a conference, and this idea news came up. And he, he said at that point he had stopped reading all newspapers and listening to the news. He said for the fact 
that not listening to it drew him toward people because the way he got his news was ah. through listening to people. Yes. And he said, what I have come to realize, and I did that, I'll get to that in a minute, but he said, what I've realized is now when Jason tells me the news, I know Jason's point of view on everything, so I know I'm getting the news to me through Jason's point of view. Hmm. The newscaster also has a point of view, Absolutely. and he is also giving me his point of view, mm -hmm. but I don't always know what his is. It takes me a while. Mm. And so then if I have another friend, he tells me the same story because it is the word. That's why I call news. Everybody's talking about whatever's happening. He said, I wind up getting a more balanced approach because I know people from different points of view. And he mm -hmm. said, I just don't have to read anything. And instead of me being the one that when people go, hey, did you hear about what's going on with COVID? I go, oh, yeah, I know about that, blah, blah. He mm -hmm. said, I just go, hey, man, just tell me about it. Yeah, I've, I, I was going to say that I think there's a thing in us, because I found it in me, that it feels almost less than or embarrassed to admit that I haven't heard of something. And, yeah. and I think it's important for me, just as to have the fruit of the spirit grow in me, to have that experience and just be okay with that. Right. And I've had to do that for a while, and it's okay to say, "No, I don't know anything about that, or I haven't heard about that." But like you said, why don't you tell yeah, me? Just tell me. Tell me what you think I ought to know, and then I get to hear it from their perspective. Yeah. And what, There's nothing wrong with that. What I've learned over the last year, so I've changed in the last year for the first time since 2008 or nine when I heard him speak. I have started. I have some curated news of my own. I listen to three different news sources. I try to have uh, three different points of view. And I listen to a news brief every morning. It's all the news I get. I don't listen to others. But, and they're about five minutes a piece, a summation of the news. Um, but the reason I started that was after COVID and then after the political tension that was, has been rising in our country over the last five or four, how long ever been this been? Mm -hmm. Uh, I realized I didn't know any people. I mean, all of my friends on both sides were angry about the news. Yes. And what it began to get to me is even when I'd say to them, well, tell me about it, it was coming at me in such a flood of emotions that I began to say, um, I don't want to feel the way they feel. Mm -hmm. I probably need to go get some... Uh, primary source material yes. that doesn't have as much emotion tied to it as they all seem to have. And I have friends on both sides of the issues and everybody was mad. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, if the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, yeah. if I take that junk into me, it's going to kill this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I would say to, to the person who asked the question, because they say it in a context of I'm having a hard time following news and not having it with their words derail me from following Jesus, which I think is what you just talked about, Ed. Uh, to be real honest, if the source of news that you're listening to watching is derailing you and you still watch it or still listen to it, then you might not be following Jesus. Yeah, you, yeah. And, I, and I hate to be that blunt with you, but if, if that source of news or that whatever it is that you're holding on to, you know is doing that, you still hold on to it, it has, like we said in the series at the beginning of the year, you know, our, our, our in the fall, our filter is we put politics or news mm -hmm. or whatever in front of our following of Jesus, then you got to flip that. And so maybe, yeah, you, you do need to cut that off. Well, and I'll say particularly going back to the first question that we just answered on this podcast about there isn't anything happening in the world right now that just hearing about it, I mean, just hearing about it. Again, I'm not talking about something that would happen to a friend of mine or a per that shouldn't immediately shake me. But there's not much happening in the world that ought to make me go, ah. Oh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because it, it's not that close to me. People say, aren't you worried about what so-and-so's doing or going to do? And I go, he, she, them, they ain't done much to me yet. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, well, they're going to plan on it. Well, okay. But, you know, yeah. It, yeah. it ain't happened to me yet. Most of the fear that has been thrown at me concerning the news, to be honest, has not happened to me. Right. Oh, yeah. Almost all of it, yeah. in fact. You know, the, the well, if so-and-so gets elected, this is going to happen. Or if so-and-so doesn't get elected, this is going to happen. And you need to be afraid. 
I, I'm telling you, I, I've heard that for s- decades now, yeah. and most of it has not happened. Mm-hmm. And so, for me to then take that in as as truth and live in it as 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 a source of stress or anxiety for me, it it is derailing me from the kingdom of God that I'm trying to live in. So, yeah, I, I should probably cut myself off from it. So. Well, I think it's just important to know what is it that I hope to get from the news. I think that's true for anything. I mean, you, you were talking about food earlier. What is it that I hope to get from this food? Like, you know, why, why do I feel the need to consume as much as I am? Um, is, my, is my desire to, uh, for news, like you said, to be informed? And, I mean, this is, this is my personal thing, to be a know-it-all. I want to be able to either and, and we use very righteous self-righteous I you know I'm a pastor so people are going to come to me and I need to be able to interpret it for them and help them have all the information no I don't no I don't because even with the news I don't have all the information I don't know and that's well, not ulti- and, and then you got to ask well because this is true of a lot of people why are we watching so much of it because let's be truthful what's happening in the world can usually be condensed down into five minutes so for me to listen to it from over and over and over again it, to me, it, it it reeks of I'm wanting I'm wanting to I'm wanting to get some maybe an, some ammunition to win an argument or or like you said I'm I'm trying to pump up some kind of emotion in this or whatever sense of fear is driving yeah, I, it. Or yeah. I'm trying or I'm trying to reinforce control, something I want to that control I, something I think if I know enough yeah. I'll control it somehow but yeah. I I have the same thing Nathan of wanting I just don't want to people think I don't know. You yeah. said that too. I just, yeah, I just I mean, don't want to think. I, I think that's in all of it. I want to be able to engage in the conversation or whatever. And I, th- I think for me, what I, and I try to do this with lots of things in my life. And I think it's just important is going. What do I need? What is going to be helpful to me? Loving God and loving people. And for the most part, most news doesn't help me with that. And no. I would even, I would even go as far to say. Most things, most COVID updates don't help me with that. There are mm-hmm. certain things, but here's what I'll say. If I'm not getting m- massive COVID updates, but someone goes, well, but you would know not to wear a mask. Well, I would because I would go to a grocery store and they'd say wear a mask. And I don't personally, and I know this is another thing, I, when I'm going to the store and that person says to come into my store, I need to wear a mask. I don't need to be well researched on it. This is this person's Space, their property, whatever you want to say, they have asked me to submit to them in love. And I, as a follower of Jesus, go, okay, if that's what you want for me to do to enter into your residence, to your property, whatever you want to call, that's, I don't have to be informed and have some political argument with you in that space. I know what love requires of me because of what you've asked of me. If it's something I can do, I can do it. Or even in, I can see in certain maybe periods of time, like around an election, to go, hey, I want to be informed so I can love my neighbor, not so that I can better keep myself safe or any of those. How can I love my neighbor? Who? What do I need to know to help them? I can see that. But I have found most often for issues in our country and in our world that require things that maybe I personally can't do, political things, justice issues, things like that, Often the news is not as helpful to me as uh, something that has a little bit more of a, a scope of time. And someone who has sat and for a year or two sat and researched and done some time, and obviously that has angles to it as well as news do. But I found most often uh, the term uh, people like to use hot takes mm. are not very helpful. Something that happens within thirty minutes and someone's got or in their mind days. a very well, and it's yes. and it's and it's honestly lazy. On our part, because if if I need to listen to somebody somebody else's opinion in order to know what I f- think about a factual thing that has happened, that's pretty lazy. I think it's better to listen to the factual thing that happened, and then, in light of who I am in Christ and what I know of Him and what God's Word tells me and all of those things, why don't you form your opinion based on that rather than just trusting what somebody else is yeah. feeding me? Um, now that's harder work. <laughs> it takes a little more time, I would guess, but it, it is, I would think the, it, it is in line with what we're supposed to be doing as followers of Jesus of, I take thoughts captive. I make them obedient to Christ. I don't just listen to what whoever on the television is telling me, whatever their opinion might be. I, doesn't mean I can't hear it, but I got to be discerning, Yep. Mm-hmm. you know? 
So I'd, I'd say to the person who asked the question, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting facts and, un- and knowing what's sure. going on. But, you know, if there's a limit, find out what you, f- you know, think is important and then be done with it and inform your own. At the, at the end of it, if it is not, if you can't figure out a way to do it that leads you to love, yes. joy, peace, patience, kindness, you probably at least need to be done with it for a while and yeah. see if you yeah. can calm yourself down. That's right. Yeah, I, mean, would, I would take a big step back mm-hmm. and then allow yourself to inch back in to other things. As, and, if what you're saying, if the word derail is, it, I mean, if the train is coming off the tracks, the number one thing in your life, we just said that earlier mm-hmm. in the podcast, is to seek first his kingdom. That's the train. So well, everything else in your life, if this is taking that train off the tracks, your number one priority is getting the train back on the tracks. Someone else can worry about what's going on in the world. And I'll say this for people that maybe weren't even wise enough to write the question, and this person at least thought they're being derailed. You may not be thinking you're derailed, but people around you are like, oh, yes. man, mm-hmm. your wheels are up in the air and you're about to tip over. If you're constantly posting memes that are aimed at somebody – that take really complex issues and boil them down to something that you can put over Morgan Freeman's face <laughs> or, you know, yeah. or somebody yeah. else that you can put and it all gets summed up in less than 40 words, you're, you're derailed. Yes. Yeah. That's I mean, if point. you're atting people all the time with your stuff, you're, you're not loving people. Or if what you're saying, what you post, totally causes pain to, to another group of people, and you're okay with that? Not that truth sometimes doesn't no. hurt, but but you you know that's what it's going to do, and 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 you're unwilling to to sit in that moment of of hurt and pain that you just caused, and and hear it, and and try to identify with it. But you're just happy that you won an argument, or, or I said the truth, you, man. Yeah, or I put somebody in their place. That that's the thing that hurts me. I, I read stuff online, and and I and I think I wish you could sit with so-and-so that I know, that I know when they read that, what they feel. Sure. And yeah. I wish you could sit over there with them and hear that because I think you might rethink maybe they wouldn't, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So. I have to believe that the Spirit of God is in people that when you're faced with people mm. and not an issue, yes, you feel differently. Absolutely. I hope. It's been that, that's been my experience my whole life is, you know, Issues are real simple and real easy to stay hard on. But then when I'm around somebody, I even see that in people that, you know, have a very definite take on a, a news issue or a political issue. They, they seem very it's, – it's, it's fascinating to me. I've, I've known some people who have a very stern, hard take, and they're immovable. But then I've watched them get around some people that are different, that they happen to have a relationship with, that they love, and they just find out, oh, this person's on the other side – immediately their their view starts to soften. And I think that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because we shouldn't stand so hard on a on a certain take or a certain opinion or belief that it overrides relationship with people. And I think if we did more relationship and less over here on this on this we'd have a lot better dialogue and we'd have a lot better spirit. Well people are never the enemy. Exactly. And I think I think you have to hold on to that as hard as you can because uh, the the world in every way, shape, and I I mean that in every possible way. Yeah. Any yeah. way that you come up with, well, what about the answer is people are never the enemy. Never. Um, and the more that you can hold that in the in the back of your head or at the front of your mind is even better. Mm-hmm. People are never the enemy. Uh, my yeah. my my responsibility is is to to love people, including my enemies. Uh, and so what that means is I'm making friends out of enemies, right? And I'm, and I'm drawing people towards Christ. And so you probably don't remember, but that used to be the motto of our church before we got clever with, uh, no perfect people. I think I Mm. can't remember what it was before. No perfect church for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. it was originally when we first formed this making friends out of of strangers. strangers. Mm, There you go. And we had a, Two hands, like a two dudes shaking, shaking, with a, a shaking suit hands. on. Yeah, shaking hands. Mm-hmm. Shaking hands. With I do suit. remember that. That was our logo. I do remember that. Yeah, that's a way back, man. That's way back. There you go. OG community Christian. <laughs> yes. All right. Making friends out of strangers. So we're still doing that, just not with stupid logos. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
<laughs> so we're done today. That's it. So uh, keep sending those questions in to us, and uh, the link is always in the description where you can get in touch with us. I've changed the form a little bit. Now, uh, you can still always put them in anonymously, but now there's a place if you want to give us your name. We love to know your name so we can talk directly we to would. you. We would. But you don't have to. It's not required, but I left that uh, option open to you in case you ever want to let us know who you are. Because sometimes we say, I don't know who this person is, but if, if we know you and you want to tell us who you are, we will talk to you. Yeah, if you're if you're listening instead of watching, I just love to know that. Do people are there people listening but not watching? So like on podcast apps. Yeah, like I just love to know sure. that. I know that, I think there are some people because the people I talk to I have a feeling they're listeners, not watchers. Hmm. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. So let us know. Let us know. We have no way to know that. Mm-hmm. We just assume everybody's looking at our beautiful faces on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Let's hope not, <laughs> for their sake. All right. So we got a few more questions coming next week, so y'all tune in. Uh, some good ones coming, so uh, we'll get to those next week. Until then, see you Bye. next time.